good afternoon or good evening to everyone depending upon the time of joining and welcome to today's webinar the topic of discussion of this recorded webinar is generic transdermal product development i would like to briefly introduce myself my name is dr manish bankar i am currently working as a project lead transdermal and topical nc product development Primberry Biopharma Company Limited, Shanghai, China. I have a total work experience of more than 10 years and have worked with Zydus Cadillac Ahmedabad on transdermal formulation development and with Dr. Reddy's Laboratories Hyderabad on Finat 5B2 topical product development and topical process development. I would like to thank Dr. S.J. Shirsagar, Principal MET's Institute of Pharmacy, Principal Knowledge City, Nashik and my dear friend Dr. Moreshwar Patil, a faculty member of your institute for providing me the opportunity to share my experiences related to transdermal development. What I would like to do in the next hour or so is to bring closer to you generic transdermal delivery system and its development. By the way, I would use the terms transdermal, TDS, patches synonymously. I would briefly touch topics like generic drugs, TDS, and transdermal product development flow. New drug molecules are being developed and made available for patients every year during last many decades. However, the number of molecules available as transdermals is still around 20. Transdermal is still considered as a very niche area. The persons working in field of transdermal formulation and analysis is also very limited. The broad aim of this discussion is to provide a brief insight to the students about general product development with transdermal as an example. Without further ado, let's start the webinar. Moving to our main topic, I would like to give a brief introduction to generic drugs abbreviated new drug application, certification clauses and differences in NDA and ANDA review process. So what are generic drugs? A generic drug product is comparable to a brand or reference listed drug product in dosage form, strength, route of administration, quality and performance characteristic and also the intended use. The legislative history of generic drugs is related to 1984 Wa Waxman-Hatch Act which created an abbreviated mechanism for approval of generic copies of all the drugs approved after 1962 by stating that preclinical and clinical tests did not have to be repeated for generics. a generic drug, one has to file an abbreviated new drug application or ANDA with the US FDA. An ANDA contains data which when submitted to FDA's CDR Office of Generic Drugs provides for ultimate review and approval of generic drug product. Once approved, the applicant may manufacture and market the generic drug product to provide a safe, effective, low-cost alternative to the public. All such approved products both the innovator and the generic are listed in FDA's approved drug products with therapeutic equivalence evaluations, which is also called as orange book. The generic drug applications are termed abbreviated because they are generally not required to include clinical and preclinical data to establish safety and effectiveness. Instead, they are required to scientifically demonstrate that their product is bioequivalent that is, the generic drug performs in the same manner as the innovator drug. As a part of ANDA, patent certification is to be provided, which are cited as Para 1, when required patent information has not been filed. In this case, FDA may approve the generic drug immediately and one or more applicants may enter later. Para 2, when the patent has expired. 
In this case, the FDA may approve generics immediately and one or more applicant may enter later. Notification is provided when a patent is not expired but shall expire on a specific date. In this case, the FDA may approve the ANDA effective on the date of expiration and one or more applicant may enter later. A PARA 4 certification is provided when the patent is invalid or non-infringed by the generic applicant. Here there is usually a court involvement. If the patent holder sues the applicant, then a 30 months stay is granted to the holder. Here two situations arise. Situation 1 when the 30 months period is expired then exclusive marketing rights can be provided to the first applicants for 180 days after the 30 months expiration period and situation 2 where the 30 month period is not expired then if the judgment is in favor of the patent holder then the FDA cannot approve the ANDA until the patent is expired and if the judgment is favoring the ANDA applicant then marketing rights of 180 days begin for the first applicant immediately. Now let us find out what are the differences between the new drug application versus the abbreviated new drug application review process. The CMC which is also called as chemistry manufacturing and controls and labeling and testing are common for both the NDA and AND applications. However, the generic drugs do not need to carry out expensive clinical studies and instead have to prove bioequivalence to the innovative drug product. Now I shall move ahead and briefly introduce transdermal drug delivery system. According to USP, transdermal drug delivery system, also called as patches, are self-contained discrete dosage forms which when applied to the intact skin are designed to deliver the drug through the skin to the systemic circulation. The strength of the transdermal system is defined in terms of the patch activity which is defined as in terms of release rate of the drug from the patch total duration of the drug release from the patch and the patch surface area. For example, Exilon 5 which is a rivastigmine, rivastigmine transdermal system manufactured by Novartis has strength of 4.6 mg per 24 hours for a patch size of 5 cm square. Transdermal patches are generally dose proportional and are cut from the same laminate giving different strengths of patches. I will not delve deep on this point but every drug, drug delivery system has some advantages and limitations. Some of the advantages of transdermal systems are avoidance of first pass metabolism, avoidance of gas gastrointestinal side effects, the patch can be easily removed from the body to terminate the drug, drug effects and it provides a continuous systemic drug delivery. However, not all the drug molecules can be delivered transdermally and drug molecules should satisfy a few requirements like it should have a low molecular weight. Ideally, the molecular weight should be between below 500 Daltons. The drug should be lipophilic in nature and ideally the log p should be between 1 to 3 and the drug should be potent uh, and it is better if the dose of the drug is below 20 mg. Let's have a look at a different type of transdermal system. Transdermal drug delivery has made a lot of progress in the past decade and is now classified into two types passive transport based TDS and active transport based TDS. A few approaches for active transport based TDS are microneedles, iontophoresis, sonophoresis and electrophoration. The iontophoretic fentanyl and somatriptan patch with the trade names 
INOCs and ZQT, which were approved by the US FDA, have now been discontinued due to safety issues. Almost all of the US FDA approved transdermal products are however based on passive transport and some of the base, uh, basic approaches which, which are used are reservoir in which the drug reservoir is embedded between an impervious backing layer and a rate controlling membrane. The drug release occurs only through the rate controlling membrane. In the drug reservoir compartment, the drug can be in the form of solution, suspension, gel or disposed in a solid polymer matrix. On the outer surface of the polymeric membrane, a thin layer of drug compatible hypo hypoallergenic adhesive polymer is present to maintain contact with the skin. The next approach is drug in adhesive system where the drug reservoir is formed by dispersing the drug in an adhesive polymer and then spreading the medicated polymer adhesive by solvent casting or by melting the adhesive in case of hot melt adhesives onto an impervious backing layer. Fentanyl patch with brand name Duragesic is an example of such kind of drug in adhesive systems. Occasionally on the top of reservoir layer, a layer of unmedicated adhesive polymer can also be applied. And an example of such a system is Rivastigmine patch. The next approach which is used is multilaminate, multilaminate type of transdermal system. Here two drug in adhesive drug reservoirs are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. Clonidin catapress patch is an example of such type of multilaminate system. The talk shall now be focused in context to the drug in adhesive matrix type transdermal systems. Represents components of transdermal system. The drug in adhesive patch usually consists of a reservoir of drug a film or laminate, laminate which acts as a backing and protects the patch from the outer environment. A skin adhesive layer which serves to bind the components of the patch to the skin. A protective liner also called as a re release liner which protects the drug during the storage and is removed prior, prior to the use. The release liner also acts as a substrate for metering the drug adhesive excipient coating blend during the coating process and finally a rate controlling membrane which controls the release of the drug from the reservoir in certain type of patches. In some patches there will be no skin adhesive layer and the drug adhesive matrix is directly in contact with the skin. Other than the above mentioned components the patch may contain matrix stiffeners, softeners enhancers, fillers, plasticizers, etc. to mediate drug release. And 13 and 14 represents updated list of US FDA approved and marketed products. The latest product launched was a Synapin patch for Alzheimer's disease. There are no generic products available for rotigotin, methylphenidate, granisetron, capsiacin because the product patents of these shall start expiring only after 2025. The product patents for diclofenac epulamine, selegiline and lidocaine tetrakin patch have expired recently. Estradiol nor norethindrone and estradiol levonorgestrel patch also do not have any generics probably because of complexity in formulation and safety issues associated with, associated with the administration of two drugs. Overall, there are only around 20 drug molecules available as transdermal systems. Now let's start with how a generic transdermal patch is developed in a generic pharmaceutical company. 
I will discuss the general product development flow in brief, touching all the important steps starting from sourcing to filing of AND. Please bear in the mind that many activities may happen in parallel and the sequence may differ from company to company. Any project starts with thorough literature review using various available sources. US FDA website, free patent online, daily made are few free to use resources from where data is collected. FDA site has all the drug approval package which includes approval letters, review documents and summary basis of approvals. From orange book, one can get a list of patents and reference li a listed drug, separate drug specific bioequivalence and dissolution study guidance are also available on US FDA website. The aim is to get idea regarding all the relevant data possible to help in the development of the product. From a formulator's point of view, decoding the quantitative composition is important. Qualitative, com qualitative composition can be easily found in drug product label or daily made. However, quantitative composition is not always available. For, for some products, composition is sometimes disclosed in product related patent. However, if the composition is not mentioned, it is to be determined through the reverse engineering and experimentation to arrive at a formulation similar to RLD. The literature review is mostly done by R&D department while the patent landscaping also, also called as patent mapping which is an analysis of patent data that reveals the business, scientific and technological trends is mostly done by intellectual property rights team. Is sourcing of API. The R&D calculates the amount of API for development and also for the scale up and exhibit patches and it sends the request to supply chain for procurement. The supply chain usually identifies few suppliers and arranges for sample quantities and certificate of analysis for evaluation. Two, three potential active suppliers are evaluated for drug master file, USP compliance, impurity profile, etc. The API supplier is usually chosen by R&D and API lots are procured by supply chain. After receiving the API, assay related substances, particle size, water contained, LOD and impurity profiling etc are performed on the API lots. X view of Lux method development using human cadaver skin and virtual um, and vertical diffusion cell is also initiated by the analytical team. Step is sourcing and testing of reference listed drug samples. RD calculates the amount of RLD samples for development and stability studies and send the request to supply chain for procurement. Usually Transdermal systems are available in two or more strengths and in such cases sufficient number for all the strengths are to be procured. Care should be taken that RLD samples from US market only are procured. Once the, once the RLD samples are available, physical tests like size, shape, color, thickness, etc. and chemical tests like assay, RS, peel, tack, shear and IVRT are performed. The RLD testing data serves as a benchmark for the performance of in-house developed generic product. Next step is packaging system evaluation. Transdermal patches are usually packed in individual sealed barrier pouches made, it, made from multi-laminated films. We shall dis discuss the details in subsequent slides. 
The complete evaluation of packaging material along with carton is carried out by the packaging team. The material type, thickness, shape, size, sealing width, printing, patient information leaflet, moisture vapor transmission rate of the pouch etc are determined and the data is provided to R&D. The packaging team and R&D then identify a suitable packaging system. After the above mentioned activities, formulation development is initiated. The first step is the selection of patch design. It depends upon the ANDA filing strategy. As discussed earlier, para 1, 2, 3 or 4. For para 2 and 3 strategy, design similar to the reference listed drug or a completely different design can be employed unless the drug release in vivo is matched. The FDA encourages applicants to reduce the size and the amount of the drug in the patch in order to improve the safety during and after the use of the patch. Reduction in patch size and amount of drug but still providing a comparable, comparable drug release as RLD is acceptable to US FDA. The para 4 strategy usually necessitates change in design and composition in order to prove that patent is not being infringed. Take the example of Rivastigmin patch. The RLD is Exilon from Novartis and there are 5 generic products available for the same molecule from Mylan, Elnogen, Amnil, Zydus and Beckenridge. It is available in 3 strengths 4.6 mg per 24 hour, 9.5 mg per 24 hour, 13.3 mg per 24 hour with patch sizes of 5, 10 and 15 centimeters respectively. The top figure shows patch design of Exilon which was copied by Amnil and Mylan. Though the design is same, there are minor variation in composition of Amnil and Mylan. This information is readily available in PIL. It has a four layer design and contains a backing layer, reservoir matrix, adhesive matrix and a release liner. Zydus follows a very simpler design with additional foam backing layer attached to the main backing layer as shown in the third figure. And figure 2 is a design adopted by Elvogen. It has a 5 layer patch design in which the 4 layers are similar to Novartis while the additional cover sheet layer is similar to Zydus. The selection of patch components and composition. As mentioned previously, it is dependent on type of patch design selected. There can be three different scenarios. Scenario 1 in which the patch design is similar to RLD and using composition and components which are same as RLD. Scenario 2 in which the patch design is similar to RLD but using the composition and components which are slightly different from the RLD. And Scenario 3 in which the patch design is different than the RLD along with totally different composition and components. Compare the composition of RLD Exilon with its generics. The generics from Mylan and Amnil have the same patch design as the RLD Exilon. However, there is change in one ingredient each as highlighted with red in the table. If you look at the generics from Zydas, it has a different patch design and is based on polyisobutylene adhesive rather than acrylates and silicone adhesive used in Exilon and it also doesn't use any antioxidant. Finally, the generic of Alvogen is similar to Zydas in terms of composition but has an additional acrylate adhesive layer 
which is similar to the RLD. The bottom line here is that you can use any composition and design provided that you can match the in vivo release rate of the RLD. We come to the selection of pressure sensitive adhesives, excipients, liner, backings, etc. The type of pressure sensitive adhesive, liner, backing film, and other excipient used is usually mentioned in patient information leaflet. However, the exact grade is not always available. Material similar to the RLD or suitable for the selected patch designs are evaluated from commercially available options. Usually a multiple liners, backings and adhesives are evaluated during the lab experiments. A range of backing films and liners are available from 3M and other suppliers which are generally found in the commercial patches. Doe Corning and Hen Henkel and BASF are major suppliers of silicone, acrylate and PIB based PSAs. Other excipients like matrix fillers, enhancers, etc. of USP NF grade are generally used during experiments. Slide lists some of the commerci commercially available liners from 3M and St. Cobain. The liners used in transdermals are mostly polyester, polyethylene, triplet, or similar material and are sometimes coated with silicone or fluoropolymers for easy release. The list is not exhaustive and a complete list of products and relevant data is available on respective company websites. Some of the commercially available backing films from 3M. The backing films mostly used in transdermals are made from polyester polyethylene triplate, polyurethane and may be pigmented or translucent. Some may be aluminium vapor coated for enhanced protection against moisture and oxygen. The tensile strength and elongation modulus along with moisture vapor transmission rate and oxygen, oxygen transmission rate are some of the parameters on which the backing films are selected. The complete list of product and relevant data is available on company website. Commercial transdermal drug in adhesive products are based on pressure sensitive adhesives of acrylate, polyisobutylene and silicone chemistry. The pressure sensitive adhesives are polymeric materials and are supplied as, supplied as solubilized solutions in suitable solvents like ethyl acetate and hexane etc. The slide lists commercially available adhesives from Henkel and Doe. Henkel has a range of acrylates and PIB adhesives with trade name as Durotac and Gelwa. While Doe is a major supplier of silicone adhesives with trade name of BioPSA. The complete list of product and relevant data is available on the company website. This slide depicts an example of component selection done for rivastigmine transdermal system. The liner used in Exelon is polyester film fluoropolymer coated scotch pack 9709 and 9755 which are fluorosilicone coated polyester film from 3M can be evaluated for a generic. Similarly, lacquered polyethylene triplet film is used as backing in Exelon and Scotchpack 9723 backing which is tan pigmented, uh, pigmented polyethylene and polyester film can be evaluated as a suitable option. Durotoc 387-2353 and BioPSA 74302 silicone adhesive are disclosed in patent as two adhesives used in the Exelon and can be used directly in the generic versions. 
then we move to selection of packaging material the patches are indiv individually sealed in child resistant sachets made from multi laminated films the sachets are then packed in individual cartons paper polyester aluminium polyacrylonitrile and olb polyethylene aluminium polyethylene lem are some of the widely used sachets used in transdermals the packaging development team suggests a suitable packaging material based on r&d requirement uh, olb is a kind of glassine paper which is printer friendly having selected the composition and components the actual formulation development is initiated the first step is pre formulation studies if the generic drug contains some penetration enhancer then drug excipient compatibility with permeation enhancer is performed ipm isopropyl myristate glyceryl monolaurate pgml ethyl oleate glycerin capric 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 triglyceride lauryl lactate oleic acid mineral oil propylene glycol are some of the penetration enhancers which are used in transdermal systems the api and individual permeation enhancer are weighed into a suitable usp type 1 glass vials and exposed to accelerated stability conditions for a period of 30 days the samples are withdrawn at 7 15 and 30 days and are analyzed for degradation products this gives an idea if the apin permeation enhancers are compatible with each other the psc in transdermals are polymeric materials made from monomers so some trace monomers might be present in the adhesives which might interact with the api hence drug excipient compatibility is performed to rule out any incompatible incompatibility issues acrylic acid glyceryl monoacrylate vinyl acetate 2 hydroxy ethyl acetate methacrylic acid methyl methacrylates are example of some of the uh, monomers which are used in acrylic polymers one need to find out the exact monomers used in the selected adhesive from the vendor and carry out the study on the specific monomers the tds may also contain matrix fillers like colloidal silicon dioxide or talc for example clonidine patch contains colloidal silicon oxide as a matrix filler in such cases drug excipient compatibility with this material is carried out to rule out any adverse interaction both both of these tests are performed in a similar way as mentioned with penetration enhancers earlier the other pre formulation studies which are routinely performed are transmission study with backing and liners and uptake study with the backing and liners and solubility study of api in solvents and permeation and permeation enhancer the liners and backing films should be totally impermeable to the composition of the patch specifically to the api transmission study with backing and liners is performed to identify if the drug is able to permeate the backing and liner the study is done on 2 to 3 liners and backing films selected for the development and the study is performed using trans diffusion cells the liner or backing film is placed between two compartments of the trans diffusion cell and a saturated solution of api in a suitable solvent is filled in the donor compartment and buffer ph 7.4 is filled in the receptor compartment the receptor fluid is analyzed at initial 24 and 48 hours for the api additionally a 6 week uptake study with backing and liner is also done using 2 to 3 selected liners and backing films 
5 mm into 5 mm pieces of liner and backing are cut and these are immersed in saturated solution of API in a closed flask or container and stored at 40 degree centigrade and at room temperature. At each week time point samples are removed, wiped carefully and analyzed for the API. As a part of pre-formulation study, solubility study of API in penetration enhancer and solvent is also performed. Excess quantity of API is added to the individual penetration enhancer and solvents and sonicated for around 2 hours. After sonication, individual solutions are filtered and analyzed by HPLC to determine the saturated sol solubility in individual solvents and penetration enhancers. Transdermal system contains drug in solubilized state dispersed uniformly in the adhesive matrix. If the drug crystallization occurs, it may impact the release rate from the system and ultimately affect the bioavailability. Hence, crystallization studies in adhesive polymers and polymers with enhancers and polymers with crystal growth inhibitors is performed. Here, a coating blend of API and adhesive polymer, uh, API plus adhesive polymer plus penetration enhancer and API plus adhesive polymer plus crystal growth inhibitors like PVP etc are made and coated on a release liner which is then laminated with another release liner. The patches of suitable size are cut from this laminate and kept in stability at 40 degrees centigrade and room temperature. The samples are observed visually and under microscope for drug crystals at weekly intervals for a period of up to two months. As a part of pre-formulation studies, ex vivo flux studies are also performed using France diffusion cell and human cadaver skin in adhesive polymers and polymers with enhancers to get an idea about the release rate from the systems. Then we move towards actual prototype development. As a first step, QTTP that is quality target product profile and CQAs that is critical quality attributes for the product service for the product is established. We will not go deep into what is QTTP, CQA and design of experiments as they itself are a separate topic for discussion. At this stage different prototypes are prepared using selected pressure sensitive adhesives, permeation enhancers, other excipients, liners, backing films and application of design of experiment principles to achieve a prototype whose drug release rate XVO are similar to the RLD. Experiments are performed for the selection and optimization of pressure sensitive adhesives, optimization of drug to permeation enhancer ratio if any and optimization of additives. Those developed are routinely analyzed for physicochemical characterization. They are also subjected to comparative ex vivo flux studies using human cadaver skin. Every flux study involves comparison of release rates from the in-house patch versus the RLD. The prototype which matches the RLD in both physicochemical characterization and flux study is then selected as a lead prototype. The lead prototype is also charged on ICS stability and batches are also manufactured to support analytical method validation activities. The next step is execution of a bio batch. A batch using composition of lead prototype is manufactured in bigger batch size to perform preliminary comparative bioavailability study, which is usually carried out at a CRO on a limited number of subjects. The batch is analyzed for physicochemical characterization and also charged on stability. The main purpose of the bio batch is to gain confidence 
before the actual bioability studies at a larger scale. Justification form for the study which is a company specific activity apart from preparation of study protocol, generation of certificate of analysis of the innovator and the test products are some of the activities that need to be completed before initiating the study. Before moving further, I would like to introduce the equipment that is used for transdermal manufacturing at lab and plant scale. The manufacturing procedure for DIA patches and analytical specification. For lab skill development, a lab coater, a benchtop laminator and patch cutter with a different dies is needed. Various type of lab coaters are available from different vendors from manual to automatic version with and without oven assembly. The image shown in the slide is from Mathis AG Switzerland having an oven assembly which is suitable for coating A4 size sheets. Side represents the equipment used for pilot scale development. The TDS manufacturing at the plant scale is a continuous process where a coating from 100 to 700 meter length is done continuously. The figure shows plant scale equipment with a coating and lamination assembly at one side and a series of drying chambers also called as tunnel at the other end. Optimac, uh, Zimmerman and Mathis AG are few of the vendors supplying this kind of customized equipment. Slide 36 represents general manufacturing process for drug in adhesive patches, typically API, adhesive, solvents, excipients, etc. are mixed together to prepare a coating blend. The coating blend is then coated as a very thin film, usually in microns, on the release liner using, using a coating head. The coated liner then passes through the drying tunnel where the solvents are evaporated. At the end of the drying tunnel, a backing film is laminated to produce a mother laminate. The laminate is further converted to daughter coils and then cut into patches with patch cutting machine and packed in the pouches. It represents the list of analytical tests to assess the quality of the transdermal system other than the common tests like description, identification, assay, contained uniformity related substance. The tests which are typical for TDS are peel, tag, shear and release force and flux study. I will briefly introduce uh, peel, tack and shear addition test. Peel addition test measures the force required to peel away a transdermal system attached to a stainless steel surface. The, the transdermal system is applied to a standard plate which is generally made up of stainless steel using a predefined pressure to make the contact. After a predetermined time, the TDS is removed from the plate at a specified angle, usually 180 degree or 90 degree and at a speed of 300 mm per minute. Probe tack test. This test measures the force which is required to separate the tip of test probe from the adhesive layer of the transdermal system. Tack is an adhesive property which is related to the immediacy of the bond under, under low contact pressure between the transdermal system and the surface of the another material. There are many type of tack test which are available and can be employed and the most popular is probe tack test. Shear addition test. The shear addition provides an indication of the cohesive strength of the matrix. In this test, the test specimen is applied to a stainless steel substrate 
with a specific technique and subjected to shearing forces by means of the suspended force. Now we shall continue towards last part of the development that is scale up and exhibit batch manufacturing. The activities involved during the scale up is to identify equipment train that is identification of equipment to be to be used for the manufacture to be used for the manufacture like mixing vessel, coating machine, liner width, transfer tubing etc and identification of manufacturing process to replicate the lab batches. Here the parameters like blend size, order of mixing, mixing time, determination of drying parameters like oven temperature and blower RPM, matrix weight optimization, die cutting and printing etc are considered. After careful deliberations, scale up batch batches are manufactured in which the process is studied at different web speed and different drying temperatures to see its effect on the product quality. After the scale up batch, pre exhibit batch with an approved BMR can be manufactured. After the execution of scale up and or pre exhibit batch, Exhibit or registration batches are manufactured. The number of batches required for ANDA submission for transdermals is 3 batches. Two of the three batches for each strength should, should be at least 10% of the proposed commercial production batch or 25,000 units for each strength, whichever is greater. The third batch can be smaller than 10% of the proposed commercial batch but it should not be less than 60% of the pilot scale batch. The activities and requirements to execute the exhibit batch are method, vali method validation and method transfer to the plant, uh, raw material, packaging material specification, finished product in process specification availability, uh, master formula record preparation, batch manufacturing record, batch production, batch packaging record preparation, study protocol preparation for stability, hold time, etc. Uh, after all these, the exhibit batch is manufactured, followed by stability, char stability charging of the product along with the highest and lowest strength innovator samples. And once we have a six month stability data available for the exhibit batch, and ANDA can be filed. Uh, with this, we come to the end of this webinar. Hope you find the contents informative and helpful. Thank you very much for being patient and attentive. If you have any questions, you can write to me at manishbankar at gmail.com. Thank you once again.